Hi, my name is Rabbi Dr. Aaron Lieb Smokler. I'm the Director of Spiritual Development here at Yeshivat Maharat. Rifka, our foremother, was given a blessing before her departure to marry, and that was Achotenu Atayi Lafei Ravava. Rifka, may you be multitude, multitudinous. May you give rise to multitudes. I want to suggest that this was a challenge for her to internalize. And we see that in one core expression of hers later on when she encounters difficulty in pregnancy. And she says, Im ken lama ze anochi. If I'm to experience this amount of pain, why me? The Kedushat Levi, the Berdich of a Rebbe, has an interesting and beautiful teaching on this. He says, Vatomar, im ken lama ze anochi, perush al pi dikatav ha'arizal. Dinashim titkaniot ein lahem tsa'ar ibor vileida, ayen sham. According to the Ari, challenging as this statement might be, according to the Ari, women who are righteous do not experience tsa'ar ibor vileida. They do not experience pain of gestation or birth. Imken rifka sher'ata sheyesh la tsa'ar chashva bida'ata shehi eina titkanit, tzadkanit. Rivka experiences a great deal of pain in her pregnancy. And as if she knew the Ari anachronistically, she thinks, I must therefore not be a tzadika or a tzadiket. I must not actually be a righteous woman because I'm experiencing pain. Di'im ken lo, lo hayala tzari bor. Because if she was a righteous person, she should not have experienced pain. V'yadua demi she'eno tov i efshar she'ashrebo davar kedusha ke'ma'amar chachamenu. And it is known that a person who does have kedusha within themselves, v'yadua shemi she'eno tov i efshar she'ashrebo davar kedusha, someone who is not good does not have kedusha residing within them. V'hine rabotenu zal amruk shaita overet al petach batei midrashot haya Yaakov mefarches latzet. But there is a problem. See, Rivka believed that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. And she, has, she can only be one or the other. And so she deduces from this strange logic that if she's experiencing pain, it must mean that she's a bad person. But her logic is flaunted by the following. When she passes by a Beit Midrash, there is a pull in her stomach, the Midrash says. Yaakov is eager to leave, to exit. And she says, Well, this doesn't make sense. It seems that Kedusha does reside somewhere deep inside. So here we have the experience of pain on the one hand, which seems to testify to a lack of righteousness, but an internal experience that suggests otherwise, an internal experience that demonstrates a rush toward Kedusha. And she doesn't know how to make sense of this seeming contradiction. And here's the Berdichever. He says, Im ken lama ze anochi, is Rifka saying, Im ken, if I am not a good person, lama ze anochi, how is it that I can, I can experience anochiyut? The anochiyut being a reference to God. Dehainu anochi Hashem elokecha, he says. How can the anochi of Hashem reside within me if my experience of pain and suffering suggests that I am essentially not worthy of it. So here is Rivka, the woman who is charged with being recognizing or struggling with an internal experience of, of multitude, feeling that she cannot contain that multitude within. She cannot be both good and bad. She cannot have a tzaddik and rasha. She cannot have a multitude of experience all simultaneous going on, simultaneously going on within her. But the response to that is from God. I'm going to skip. Perush ben echad mitavel kedusha umize mochiach shahu mimakor hatov veech shochen bekirbi shani eini tova midiyesh li tsar ibur. Here the Berdi Trevor is just recapitulating what we've just said. Again, she experiences on the one hand that she can't be good, and on the other hand, there is some drive toward kedusha within her nonetheless. 
והשיב לה השם יתברך, and God says to her, שני גויים בביטנך וכולי, ולאום מלאומי אמץ. No, Rivka, you have misunderstood. You actually can contain multitudes within you, and you do. You contain two nations, you contain two drives, you contain two different directions within yourself. לא כמו שאת חושבת שאינך טוב, it is not as you think that you are not good. באמת, את טוב, you actually are. So first of all, your logic is wrong about the relationship between suffering and selfhood. It is not the case that if you experience pain that you therefore must deduce that you are no good. And you are also misunderstanding the nature of what's going on inside of you. You have thought that you must be a flat personality, that you must be either one or the other, good or bad. But Rivka, you must learn that you already are Within yourself, you already contain multitudes. You contain complexities. You contain variety. And you must learn to live with that. The statement about Anochi is a very interesting one. Im ken lama ze Anochi. I want to suggest that that Anochi that she references, that here the Berdichever tells us is a reference to God, God's self, also tells us something about the nature of godliness, about the nature of the Anochi and its multitudinous ways. And here I want to draw from the Pachad Yitzchak, Rav Yitzchak Hutner, a much later thinker. He tells us with regard to uh, Purim, actually, an interesting halacha. There's a halacha that says that when there are two Adars, Adar Aleph and Adar Bet, that we must read the Megillah in Adar Sheni. And the reason why, the time, he says, we always need to align the redemption of Purim with the redemption of Pesach. And therefore, Adar Sheni, which lies closer to Nisan, becomes the time for us to read the Megillah so that we can put into, into juxtaposition two kinds of geulah. The alenu ladat he says, ki kashem she geulat mitzrayim yesh la anochi mishela. Just like the redemption from Egypt has an anochi that comes with it. And what is that? Anochi asher hotzeticha me'eretz mitzrayim. The anochi that we come to learn of at Sinai that testifies to the Exodus story. K'mokein yesh la geulat purim anochi mishela. But Purim also has an Anochi. And what is the Anochi of Purim? Anochi haster astir. The famous statement from Devarim that comes to be understood in the Gemara as in a reference to Esther. Esther minator minayim shne'emar Anochi haster astir. God, the revelation of Anochi for Purim is Anochi haster astir. I, God, hide myself. Haster astir, which sounds a lot like Esther. And he goes on to say, and here I'll do this outside of the text, he says there are two different ways that a human being may come to know another. He says, the first way which he identifies with the Anochi of Pesach is an Anochi that is known through direct sight. Ha-hakara she-knesa Yisrael makira et ha-anochi al yedei yitziat mitzrayim. Hi dugmat adam ha-makir et chaveiro be-ezrat kli ha-or shenitan lo. As if a human being takes a flashlight and points it in the face of another. That is one way that we can know the face of another, and that is one way that we might come to know the anochi of God as well. Through direct sight, through direct experience, through the kind of knowledge that comes from bearing witness to something that is Un, um, that is identifiable and incontrovertible, like Yitziat Mitzrayim, like the splitting of the sea, what we call a nes galoi. But he goes on to say, But there's another way that we might come to know another and another way that we, we might come to know God, and that is through the development of chush acher, 
And importantly, it's a way, it says specifically, al li made et atzmo lahakiro. Another way with, that we might come to know another is through self-cultivation, through ways, through chush acher, different sensibilities, not direct sight, but touch, taste, smell, inclining or attuning our ears, let's say, to the voice of another, not using the direct line of sight per se, but ways that we teach ourselves to come to know God or another in their hiddenness, not through nes galoi, but through nes nistar, through hiddenness. He says, these are two different kinds of anochi, and I want to suggest that these are two different characters, we might say, of the anochi, capital Aleph, of God. And so it turns out that it's not only Rifka who must learn to contain multitudes within herself, but it is us who must understand that the anochi of God also contains multitudes, that God is not singular, that God's face has 70 different facets to it, that the ways that we come to know God must be through varieties of avenues and through the varieties of sensibilities, through things that are gluyim, revealed, and things that are nistarim, through things that are hidden. We must train ourselves through all of our sensibilities to come to know God in God's multitudes so that we might also appreciate within ourselves our own multitudes. Walt Whitman famously said, do I contradict myself? Very well, then I contradict myself. I am large, I contain multitudes. Here at Yeshivat Maharat, we contain multitudes and we nourish multitudes. We nourish the spirit as it grows in varieties of directions to get only larger and larger. I pray that we can continue to do that for many years to come.